So start off lying on your back. Bring your feet onto the floor, bend your knees, and just give the weight of your body into the earth. If it feels hard work to keep your legs like this, you could try dropping the knees in towards one another. Or you might bring the soles of the feet together and drop the knees open wide. Also, if you prefer, you can lengthen your legs down along the mat, but lying on your back with your knees bent and your feet on the floor is quite a nice way to give support to the pelvis and the lower back. And in this practice today, we will be giving a fair amount of focus into the pelvis. And the muscles around the pelvis, so at the front, you've got the hip flexors. At the back, the hip extensors, like the glutes and the hamstrings. The muscles on the outside, the abductors that draw the legs away, and the adductors on the inside that cross the legs over. And as you're lying there, you can just be aware of the whole pelvis that whole area of your body. Also just be aware of how intimately connected the pelvis is with the spine. So you have the pelvis united at the back of the body with the sacrum and right now your sacrum is on the earth. So feel the base of your spine, your sacrum, pressing into the earth now, uniting left and right side of the pelvis. And opposite your sacrum is your lower abdomen. And as you breathe deeply, you can get a sense of space there. You might like to place your hands there or just send your awareness there. And feel the breath floating in and out of the abdomen. And how that has a relationship to how your sacrum and your pelvis meet the earth. And then bring the hands to rest on the pelvis either side. So it's as if you were standing and you had your hands on your hips. And just gently rock the pelvis forwards and backwards. And so you're massaging the sacrum and the lower back into the floor and then tipping them away from the floor. And as you get this rolling feeling in the pelvis, in the lower back, also notice the effect that has on the front of the hips. And something I like to do here sometimes is actually place my hands at the front of the hips, so just at the very top of the thigh, and push that away and feel how that arches the lower back. And then drag it towards me and feel how that presses the lower back onto the floor. So you can do the movement with your hands a little bit, just to feel that action in the hips as well as the action in your spine. And we really get the idea that hips, pelvis, spine, it's all the same. In fact, you can call it the lumbo-pelvic hip complex. That would be the fancy anatomical phrase for this area. And then rest here, you've got your hands on the front of your thighs and the thumbs, so you've got like the palms facing onto your thighs and the thumbs just hooking on the outside. And just push one hand a little bit. So you push one leg a little bit away and then switch sides. And just give it a little, a little push, push, push and then switch a little push, push, push. And you just get this slight sense of sideways action at the hips. If you can hear a slightly eerie whistling it's the wind at the windows. <laughs> That's as close as I get to nature in this high rise, so we'll accept it. <laughs> Good. And then bring your hands down by the sides of your body. Just have them at a relaxed distance. Wherever your feet are is exactly fine. You don't need to change them. Press into your heels and start to squeeze your glutes and you will feel that it draws your tail underneath and away from the floor. 
Keep pressing into your heels, keep squeezing your glutes, and it slowly peels your spine off the ground. You ripple your spine off, squeezing your bum cheeks together. You come to the top of this bridge type shape, and then descend, peeling your way down, upper body, middle body, lower back, lastly the tail. And now just slightly turn your feet and your knees out just a little bit. And do the same again, press into your heels, squeeze your bum, start to curl your tail under, peel lower back, squeeze your bum like you're holding a winning lottery ticket in there and keep peeling your spine all the way off and just notice the difference now that you've sent your knees and feet a little bit wider. Maybe you get a bit higher. Start to roll your way down. Really take plenty of time so that you have the awareness to ripple through your spine. And again, squeeze your glutes, pressing into your feet, peeling piece by piece by piece. Journeying your spine all the way up and then slowly traveling it all the way down. And then bring the outer blades of the feet onto the floor and your feet quite close. You might need to look to figure out what I'm saying. So it's like you're going to get the soles of the feet together, but actually just a big toe mound and the heels touch and then the outer blade of your foot and your little toes are on the floor. And your knees have dropped open, but they're not all the way open. They've just come open as much as the feet allow. Press your feet together and into the floor. Again, start to peel your tail underneath, squeeze your glutes, ripple your hips up, and just feel how this changes your ability to engage your glutes and where it sends the effort and roll all the way down again, piece by piece. Take this a few times, and something else that you can also be aware of is how much the hips might be swinging from side to side. And it just indicates us that we're not working both sides evenly, which is fine, you know, your body and your life is not symmetrical, but it's just something you can be curious about, so you can really start to Gain a sense of conscious control and mastery of your movement. Take one more. We've given plenty of opportunity to wake the glutes up, to become aware of the back body. And then bring your feet onto the floor. Open your arms a little wider, maybe a T, maybe like a cactus, and just tip your legs side to side without too much control. Now this little moment to neutralize, to unravel. Good. And draw the knees in towards your chest. Reach your hands down the outsides of your shins. Now when we do this, if it makes your neck tired, just bring one hand or both hands behind your head. Hug your knees in so close that maybe your lower back starts to leave the floor. And then draw your chest up and you're trying to make yourself like a tasty little nugget. Reach your fingers beyond your heels. Draw your knees towards your nose. If there's no space here, if it feels too squashed, open your knees wide and bring your arms in between. I'm demoing that as well. And that makes a little bit more space for the front body. So if it feels like the soft tissue in the front of your body is getting compressed too much, knees wide. Otherwise, have a go at knees together. Reach, 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 and then draw all the way down, feet onto the floor. And so now we've found the power in the front of the body. Let's take it again, you have a big inhale. Exhale, start to draw your knees in, draw your tail off the floor, lift up your torso, bring your knees close towards your nose and your fingers far beyond your heels. Keep reaching and then puddling it all the way back down. One more time, spacious inhale. Exhale, draw the knees in, reach your 
arms beyond. And now hold on to backs of your thighs and take a little rock. And if rocking does not suit your body, just make your way to all fours straight away. Otherwise, if it feels nice to have a little bit of a rock and a roll. And then make your way to all fours, hands and knees. Okay. When you get there, just have a little wiggle around. Give yourself time to find the shape. Okay, spread your fingers and purposefully engage your hands. Feel like the palm of your hand is stretching. And press your knees and the tops of the feet into the floor. Push your shoulder blades apart. Have your tail neutral so you give it a little happy wiggle so that you can feel that the lower back is in its natural position. You're not tucking the tail underneath. Push the floor away with the hands to carry the shoulders. Lift your head slightly and press through the back of the head. Just for a moment, lift your chin up, look forward so it's not that. And then drop your head down towards the floor. You can feel how you lose the shoulder support. So it's somewhere between those. So you lift your head up, but you don't jut your chin forward. You press through the back of the head. And what we do here is honor the notion that the spine is on an upward trajectory. So your arms are longer than your thighs in this position. So your spine travels up and we carry the skull by slightly looking up, but pressing to the back of the head. Reach your left leg back, left leg, tuck the toes, and then firm up the whole left leg. So draw the kneecap up, engage the glute, and also lift your ribs away from the floor. And as you inhale, rock forward. So you challenge the shape by journeying towards your fingertips. Maybe you can even come to the toenail of your big toe. And then exhale, press back, 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 stretching into the calf. Use your hands to press yourself back. Inhale, start to travel forwards. Maybe you just come onto sort of the ball of the foot, maybe the tip of the toe, maybe you can come all the way onto the toenail and exhale, press yourself back through space, push through the heel. Again, inhale, squeeze it forwards. This is a really good challenge for the wrists, for the shoulders. Exhale, press it back. And even though we're focusing a lot on the pelvis today, it makes sense to work hips and shoulders together. They have a natural connection to one another. Pressing it back. And then drawing yourself into the center again. So stay exactly as you are. Just draw your left toes towards your left knee and that lifts the foot off the floor. You want to aim to keep your hips level and lift that left leg up a little bit by squeezing your left bum cheek. So it's more like pulling the crown of your head and your heel in opposite directions rather than trying to lift the leg really high. So we're not going for the back bend feeling. We're really stabilizing. Bring your right fingertips forwards. So this is a really good endurance challenge. Maybe stay here. Maybe reach your right arm forwards. Keep dialing your left toes towards the floor, drawing in your ribs and be with the challenge. Bring that hand back down and drawing the left knee in. And just come and sit back on your heels for a moment. So you sit on your shins for a moment. Inhale, push into the knees, squeeze your bum to glide up. Lift your arms, really squeeze your glutes together. Exhale, reach your arms forward, so take a little tip back at the knees. Keep your spine in one long line, so you're really controlling your pelvis. Inhale, hinge up again, lift your arms. Exhale, sitting on your heels, lowering the hands down. Again, inhale, squeeze your bum to lift up. Now, keep your glutes on, keep your torso in a straight line. Exhale, arms reach forward as you hinge back at the knees, so it just happens at the knees. Inhale, arms lift, long lung. Exhale, lowering down. One more time like this. Find the float within the challenge. Inhale, lifting it up, hinging it back, arms forward. Inhaling up and exhale, sitting it down. Yeah, good, well done. 
And then coming back onto all fours, hands and knees. Again, take your time to find the shape. Stretch the palms of the hands, spread your fingers, and you can paddle into the floor a little bit. Press the floor away with your hands, fill the space between your shoulder blades, carry the weight of your skull. It's a little bit like you are holding a grapefruit between your chin and your chest. Give your tail a little happy wiggle to help you keep your lower back neutral. And then reach the right leg back and tuck the toes on the floor. Now firm up the right leg. Lift your kneecap by engaging your quadricep, the front of your thigh. Squeeze your bum, your glute. And from here, start to tip forwards. And you don't have to do the same on both sides. One leg might be different to the other on the inhale. And then exhale, pressing back, 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 back. And use your hands to push yourself back a little bit. And then inhale, tipping forwards, project your chest forwards, look forwards. And exhale, pressing it back, use your hands to push the weight into that back foot. Inhale, traveling forwards, come maybe onto the toenail, maybe it's just the tip of the toe. Exhale, journey it back, let's take one more. Keep your elbows straight, keep pushing the floor away, keep traveling your ribs away from the floor. Press it back and then come into the center. So take that moment to really dial your left hip and the left little toes towards the floor. Firm up the whole of the right leg and draw the right toes back towards the knee so you've lifted that foot away. And then lift that leg only as high as you can keep your spine and ribs and pelvis completely still. So it won't be very high, but you really switch on the glute and the hamstring. Come onto left fingertips. Re-establish pushing the floor away with the right hand, squeezing the right bum, drawing in the ribs, and then reach maybe the left arm forwards. Somehow breathe. <laughs> Meet the challenge with curiosity. And lowering the hand, lowering the knee, and coming back to sit on your shins. Just take a few shoulder rolls, soften into this moment. <sighs> and this little flow again, so pressing into the shins, lift your arms, inhale, squeeze your bum, exhale, hinge it back. As you do this, you like push your hips forwards by squeezing your glutes. Inhale, lift your arms. Now try varying, before we do some more, try varying your foundation. So I've gone for knees apart, toes together. So if you haven't done that, you could try that. If you did do that, you could try parallel legs instead, but vary what you've done with your base a little bit. Lift your arms up, breathe in, squeeze your glutes. Exhale, hinge at the hips, arms forward. Inhale, lift it up. Keep your glutes on, again the hinge, exhale. So it's really strengthening for the glutes and the quads. Inhale, lift up. And again, exhale, reach the arms forwards. It's going to help you counterpose. Good. Take one more at your own time. Nice. And then coming onto all fours and tuck the toes underneath. Now enjoy dropping between the shoulders and dropping your head. Push into your hands to start to send your hips back towards your heels. Push into your hands a little bit more to lift your knees off the floor and now your back rounds. And then lift your hips and your heels super high and then have a little play around with your downward facing dog. Pedaling through the feet. Maybe playing around with the shoulders, the elbows. You could explore making a figure of eight with your tail. And then 
then slowly start to walk your feet forwards. And as you do that, focus on the front of your hip. So the thing that brings your leg forwards is your hip flexor, so that crease where your thigh meets your pelvis. That is where the strength is. Focus on that strength. Once your feet are forwards, separate them, bend your knees, hang over your legs, ragdoll, drop your head. Sigh, breathe, release. Push into the feet, curl your tail under and slowly roll it up. Take your time. And when you find yourself standing, bring your hands onto your hips. Just pause here in this really strong shape and just feel that solidity, that strength of the pelvis. And press down with your hands and grow up with your skull. Feel the outer blades of your feet firmly on the floor. Get a sense of lift and spiral with the arches, which helps you to engage your glutes. Press down with your hands, grow tall with your skull. Maybe close your eyes, soften your jaw, Find enough softness around the ribs and the belly that you can breathe deeply. And remember there is so much strength in the yield. Anything that is too rigid will be brittle, will break. Give yourself a little bounce, a little buoyancy, the opportunity to be curious and be fluid. to move into that soft space of uncertainty. And bring yourself towards the front of your space. Keep your hands on your hips and your feet a little wide. And just pop your elbows back a little bit so that you, it's almost like you're closing the shoulder blades behind you. You don't have to super duper squeeze them. They just pop back a little bit. Really tall through the base of the skull, through the back of the neck. Take a big inhale. Exhale, bend your knees, hinge at the hips. Utkatasana. Pause, breathe in. Exhale, expand your arms out to the side like you're pushing something away. Pause, breathe in. Exhale, sweep your arms overhead, gather up space. Strengthen the legs, pause, breathe in. Exhale, reach your fingertips forwards and your tail back and up to fold all the way down over the legs. Drop your head. Step the right leg back and pop down the knee. Inhale, lift your arms, you're right over your back leg, squeeze that bum cheek. Exhale, open your arms wide like you were pushing something down. Pause, breathe in. Exhale, gather up space, arms overhead again. Breathe in, lift a high lunge, inhale, super duper high high lunge. Hands to the floor, exhale, press that back heel away. So just like we did in the warm up. Step into a plank, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale, drop your skull. Start to press your right leg up into the sky behind you. It'll start off with the hips square, keep the legs straight, keep squeezing your glute, let that open the hips to the side. Keep squeezing your right bum cheek. Lift that leg high, high, high. Take another big inhale. Exhale, curl the knee to the nose. Shift forward, so like we did in the warm up, we really hooked in, stay, breathe in. Step the foot forwards and pop down your back knee. Exhale. 
Lift your arms overhead, inhale. Squeeze your left bum cheek, press the arms wide, exhale. Stay, breathe in. Sweep your arms overhead, exhale. As you breathe in, that high lunge, push into your feet, lift high, 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 inhale. Exhale, hands down as you push the back heel away. Use the full length of your arms by doming your upper back to step without sweeping to a plank. Breathe in. Downward facing dog. Breathe out. Now it is your left bum cheek that will lift the leg. So start to send your left leg back behind you. Use your left bum cheek to lift that leg. When it can go no higher, keep lifting it. It's going to open to the side. Let it open. Squeeze that bum cheek. Take a deep breath in. Trust your strength, exhale, curl knee to nose. Trust yourself, stay there as you breathe in. And step the foot forward as you breathe out. Step the back foot forwards, inhale, little length of the spine. Fold over the legs, drop your head, exhale. Push into the feet, come all the way to stand. Lift your arms overhead, breathe in. And draw the palms through the center. Create resistance. Exhale. Hands onto your hips. Breathe in. Press them down. Exhale. Stay here for a few breaths and really just feel the strength of your body. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, hinge at the hips, come into that Utkatasana chair pose. Stay here, breathe in. Press your arms wide like you were pushing something away. Exhale. Stay, breathe in. Exhale, sweep the arms overhead. Breathe in. Reach the arms forwards and the tail back and up to fold you all the way down. Exhale. Left leg steps back, pop down the knee. Inhale, lift the arms overhead, squeeze your left bum cheek. Good. Exhale, press the arms wide like you're pushing something down. Draw in your ribs and squeeze your bum. Stay here, breathe in. Exhale, gather the arms overhead. Push into the feet, lift up, super duper high, inhale, high lunge, hands to the floor, push your back heel away, exhale. Stepping to a plank without sweeping, inhale, downward facing dog, exhale. Left leg, press it up behind you, this time try lifting your right heel really high and try flexing your left toes back towards the knee. Squeeze your bum, open your hips, lift your right heel high, squeeze your left bum. If your ribs and chest want to turn to the side, do it. Go for more space, more strength. Stay here, take another inhale. Exhale, knee to nose, shift as far forward as you dare. Curl your spine, claw the floor with your hands, breathe in. Step the foot forward, put down your back knee, exhale. Inhale, lift the arms overhead, be with the intensity. Slow your breath, exhale, press the arms wide, squeeze your right bum cheek. Lift the arms up, inhale. Stay here now, exhale. Hook your thumbs. Inhale, lift the arms a little higher. Exhale, circle the arms behind you, shift your hips forwards and the hands come all the way down to the floor. Lift off your back knee and step to a plank, breathe in. Downward facing dog, exhale. Take a deep breath in and let it go. Lift your heels really high. 
push the floor away with your hands, straight elbows, flat hands, shoulders in the ears. Start to walk your feet forwards. Remember we said about the strength at the front of the hips. Bend your knees any point that it's helpful, but keep your elbows straight, your hands flat, you tiptoe your way forwards, you end up hanging over the legs. Take a ragdoll. A moment of softness. Bend your knees and curl your way through your spine. Take your time and roll your shoulders. Whew. Just feel the heat rising in the body. Remember that you chose to do this today. <laughs> so how can you seek a little more joy and space, self-awareness, courage, enjoyment? Okay, take a deep breath in. Bring your hands to your hips, exhale. This position of strength. Big inhale. Exhale, bend your knees, hinge at the hips. Utkatasana. Inhale, stay here. Exhale, press your arms wide like you were pushing something away. Stay, breathe in. Exhale, sweep your arms overhead like you were pushing something between your hands. Create that resistance. Stay, breathe in. Exhale, arms go forward, tail to sky. You fold all the way down, drop your head. Stepping the right leg back, pop down the knee. Inhale, arms lifting. Exhale, press the arms wide like you're pushing something away. Stay here, breathe in. Exhale, lift your arms overhead. Inhale, high lunge, power it up. Exhale, reach forwards and down. Step to a plank on the inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Lift your heels really high. Start to send your right leg up into space behind you and dorsiflex the right ankle, so draw your toes towards your knee. Lift your left heel really high. See if you can get your right leg even higher because you have squeezed your glutes. Let the squeezing of the glutes externally rotate the hip and extend the hip. Take another deep breath in. Exhale, curling knee to nose, tip forwards, hug the thigh up, trust yourself, breathe in. Exhale, foot forwards, pop down the back knee. Well done. Lift your arms, inhale. Power them out to the sides, exhale. This time we lift them up, inhale, hook the thumbs. Lift the arms, the sternum up and back, shift your hips forward, circle the arms back, exhale. Good, hands to the earth. This time step forwards, breathe in. And fold over the legs, another moment of softness. So just pause here for a moment and gently sway your weight. Left to right, left to right. Maybe make a little bit of a figure of eight. Really let your shoulders and skull drop. Bending the knees and rolling up. Okay. Place your hands on your hips. Be with that sense of strength and grounding. A little back with the elbows to really inhabit the vulnerability of opening out the front body and the strength in closing down the back body. Spiral the legs outwards a little bit by weighting the outer blade of the foot and lifting the arch. Take an inhale. Exhale.
exhale, Utkatasana. Stay, breathe in. Press your arms to the sides, exhale. Stay here. Breathe freely. Lift off your right heel. Bring your weight more into your left leg. So we think about it before we do it. Now draw your right toes towards the sky. You find yourself balancing on your left foot. Think about the strength of the left leg and the strength of the right hip flexor. As you inhale, push your left leg straight, come to stand, lift your right knee high. This is the inhale. As you exhale, you return back to the chair, but this time you turn the right leg out and you bring the outer ankle on top of the left thigh. Bit of a hip stretch. And then inhale, come to stand again, lift that leg high. And exhale, just hinge the right knee open to the side, but aim to keep your chest forwards. Inhale, right knee into the center. Exhale, bend the standing knee. This is like standing pigeon. So tip your chest forward and your hips back. Inhale, power through the left leg to stand. Exhale, open the knee to the side, but keep drawing your right hip and shoulder forwards. One more time. Inhale, right knee up the center. Exhale, into that standing figure of four. Push your arms to the sides. Inhale, lifting it up. Exhale, opening it out to the side. And then bring your foot anywhere that would feel good for a Rikshasana tree. So it could be quite high. You might go for the shin. Join the fingertips only. So not the palms, just the fingertips. And feel that possibility, that creative space between your hands. Get a sense of lift up through the skull. And remember every time we've had our hands on our hips, and we've had that feeling of pulling down. Forget about squaring the hips, just be with a sense of strength and spaciousness. Lift your ribs away from your pelvis and breathe. Good. Open your arms wide again. Lift the right knee up in front of you. Start to open the right knee to the side. Follow it with your torso, and we're gonna land in goddess pose. So you're gonna keep traveling around, pachang, <laughs> good. And then we pretend it was just really seamless. <laughs> and then bring just the fingertips together again. Okay, and choose a distance. The width, the, um, how much you turn out your feet should suit your knees. So if you really turn out your feet really far, but your knees are coming forwards, you know, get this um, hip, knee, toe sort of cohesion going on. And a feeling again of drawing your pelvis underneath and pressing your knees wide. So it demands a lot of strength and mobility around the whole hip area. Fingertips are together. Okay. And you can just breathe freely through this, but I'm not going to cue the breath. I want you to use your own breath, but you're going to bring one forearm onto one thigh and sweep the other arm to the side, push down into the forearm, lift the arm and let that draw you all the way over. And then that arm comes down, down, down. Then go back the way you came. So you reach to the side, circle the arms, be with the intensity in the legs, it's okay. This is the feeling of you getting stronger you can stick with it. You have been through harder trials in your life. I always find when I strengthen my body, I'm teaching myself resilience and perseverance. <laughs> and I think if I can learn this physical fortitude and I know I'm capable, it can translate that into mental fortitude, which is the side that I find a bit more challenging. Okay, come on up, straighten your legs, they must be burning by now, and turn your feet parallel. And then a little bit of a feeling of side bend, so you're going to shift your hips to one direction, and the side that they shift, the arm follows along, and the other arm reaches all the way overhead. And then come through the centre, shift the hips, shift the arms, and follow your breath. Any breath. 
I think we forget about twisting and side bending sometimes and to bring in spirals and the more you can make your movement varied, the happier your body is going to be. You really want to give yourself, give your tissues lots of different stimuli, but also it's really great for your nervous system, good to keep that brain nice and happy and healthy. Okay, we've got the legs parallel. Bring the arms out to the sides, really reach through your hands, make your legs strong, tip your hips back as you start to journey your chest forwards. Please do feel free to bend your knees at any time, but we're descending as slowly as possible so that we come into this wide-legged forward fold from a position of strength. And then when you get as low as you're gonna go, you could just hang the arms down, or you might like to hold on to the toes, the ankles, and just pause here. And to create more length in the hamstrings, really focus on sticking your tail up towards the sky. We're going to come out the way that we came in. So bring yourself just a little way up. Draw in your ribs and reach your tail back. Open your arms to the side. And then it's the back of the legs and the glutes that shorten to squeeze you up to standing. And lower the arms down. Bring your hands to your hips and just pause there. Let the dizziness subside if there was any. And then take a step to the uh, top of your space. Take a step to the top of your space and we'll take our little balance sequence on the other side. So we started off hands on the hips. Again, just always make time for these little micro adjustments, these moments to like check in and tune in and feel what's going on. Make the time for it because it's really where you cultivate a lot of self-awareness in your movement. Take an inhale. As the exhale comes, tip yourself into your Utkatasana chair pose. Breathe in. Exhale, power the arms wide. Lift off your left heel. Bring your weight into your right leg. Trust your legs, trust the strength of your body. Start to lift your left knee and press your right foot into the floor, come all the way to standing. Push your arms away, breathe in. Start to turn out the top leg, bend your right knee, you find that standing pigeon, you lightly rest the ankle, press the arms to the side, push your hips back. Inhale, come to stand, lift the leg higher than you thought possible. Keep your left hip and shoulder forward as you exhale, hinge the knee open to the side. Inhale, draw it forwards and up, and exhale, hips back. Keep a feeling of lift in your chest here. It really helps you to balance. It's okay if it feels like a back bend. Inhale, press into the right leg, lift the left knee high. Exhale, open that knee wide, pelvis slots underneath. Inhale, drawing it forwards. Exhale, Utkatasana, with the front leg lifted. Inhale, lift your knee. Exhale, opening it out. And then find that chair, the tree pose. <laughs> and you don't have to do the same on both sides. You might need something different one side and the other. Just the fingertips together. Gives you a bit more sense of puffing up and space. And imagine cultivating creative energy between your hands. Draw the ribs up, up, away. Settle the pelvis down. Soften your belly and your breath. You will find there's a lot more softness you can find here. And like a tree in a storm, the more rigid, the more likely the roots will be ripped from the earth. If you offer yourself the courage to yield, you are more likely to weather the storm. 
open your arms wide lifting up that left knee start to open it out to the side like a gate and we're landing that goddess pose and you most probably need to adjust your feet a little bit and then bring your hands on top of your thighs so in this position, you can use your hands to guide a little more mobility, but it also gives a nice kind of sense of like locking in, especially if you straighten your elbows. And then classic 1989 uh, dance aerobics move. Push one shoulder in and look the opposite direction. And then when I'm there, I quite like to shift my weight side to side, gives a bit of juice into the hips to sort of remove some of the gripping that can sometimes happen in these intense shapes but you know your fibers like to move your body likes movement come back through the center and go for the other side so you push the shoulder forwards look over to the side and maybe find a sense of shift the center see if you can get your forearms somehow on your thighs and drop your skull if it feels too much just keep your hands there hips can be really stubborn and the more you fight against them the more stubborn they're gonna get <laughs> they're like teenagers so you need to give them plenty of rope <laughs> um, to play with and then lift up enough that you can get your hands on the floor, turn your feet parallel. And now this sense of spiral again. So you can have the legs bent or straight, but journey your hands over to one side and just sweep them along the floor, one way, the other way. Legs can be bent or straight. Whatever wants to move, let it move. If your hips wanna shift, if you fancy gliding the arms up and away, it's totally up to you. Just create now a bit of fluidity and space. And then when you feel ready to pause in the middle, interlacing the hands behind your back or grabbing a hold of a strap or a scarf. And you can do this palms together, but I quite like to turn my palms away. It gives me a bit more space for the shoulders. Fold over, drop your skull, lift your tail, soften your jaw. And then gently unraveling, bringing the hands onto the floor and wiggling your feet in, 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 until they're like shoulder or hip distance and you find a regular rag doll. It doesn't matter which direction you're facing. And from here, pushing into the feet, curling your tail and slowly rolling all the way up to stand. <sighs> Ease into this space. Breathe into your body, move whatever wants to move. Okay, just so that we can transition together, come towards the top of your space. Very classic little flow. Sweep the arms wide and high. Inhale, gazing up. Floating on down, anything you like with the arms, gliding it over, drop your skull, exhale. Stepping straight to downward facing dog. And then coming down onto the knees. And coming up into a high kneeling position. Mm, this will be the last moment of effort before we, before, well, unless you find resting takes effort. I sometimes find it does. This will be the last strength-based activity. We're gonna play around with this hinging again. You might want to 
play around with the foundation. I really find if I have toes together and knees mm, just wider than shoulders, that helps me to bring my pelvis underneath. When I parallel the legs, it can't help but stick out my bum and then that translates into the movement. So do play around with the foundation to enable your body to find the best strength pattern. Squeeze your glutes so that you guide your tail down and the front of your pelvis up. So this brings us to a feeling of hip extension here. So we've lengthened the hip flexors by strengthening the glutes. If your desire is to stretch your hip flexors, this is an alternative way to go about it. So instead of just coming into a shape where we're like stretchy, 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 we're telling our nervous system to lengthen this because we are strengthening this. It's a smart way to approach mobility work. And there's no point in being bendy if you can't use the length. So you want to be strong through it. So squeeze your bum to lengthen your hip flexors. Bring your arms forward. It just helps you counterbalance a little bit. If you find this movement easy, bring your arms overhead. I will not demo that. <laughs> so bring your arms forward. Squeeze your bum. Be determined to keep your torso in a straight line. Inhale, tip back. Push up and then exhale. So we use the inhale and the held breath to stabilize our torso. Breathe in. Tip back, squeeze your bum, push into the feet to help you come up, and then exhale. Again, breathe in. Exhale, tip, oh sorry, hold your breath, tip back, did just say that. Come up, and then exhale, let's do one more. Breathe in, hinge it back, tip it up, and sitting down. So now that we have strengthened, they are primed to be lengthened. Bring your hands behind you. Again, I would recommend knees a little wider than toes for this. So if this is inaccessible, put blocks under your hands in this shape already, okay? And I don't want you to think about coming into camel, we're staying low. So now you're gonna do exactly the same thing we did when we were kneeling upright. Squeeze your shoulder blades together a little bit just to help Travel the movement down the body. Squeeze your bum and tuck your pelvis underneath. And you should feel this quite intensely down the front of the thigh and at the hip flexor. If you push your hips higher and come towards camel, you actually feel it less. So it's quite low and you're really focusing on drawing the tail under and squeezing your bum to make that movement. Stick with it and breathe. So again, we are creating a length by using strength. Big, spacious rib breathing. And lowering it down. Nice. No need for fancy sequencing. Just come to sit, bringing your legs forwards. So playing around with the pigeon that we did standing, now we take it seated. So I'm going to go with left ankle on first if you want to follow me with the same leg. So get the ankle, so you, you know you've got like the knobbly bits just above the foot. You don't want to put that on top of your thigh because they're quite sharp. So get that bit clear of the outer side of your leg. You're resting just above your knee, so it's like the beginning of the outside of your shin just above your knee. And I find it helps if I draw the toes back, but that you could point them, there's no real reason. I just like it. So if it works for you, but do something on purpose with that foot. Now lean back on your hands and have your fingers pointing backwards. Squeeze shoulder blades and lift your chest. You wanna feel like you're doing a back bend. And now the straight leg, you lean back on your hands a little bit. The straight leg, can you bring it up onto the foot? and then re-establish that feeling of back bend because you'll feel it will want you to tuck your pelvis underneath. And I want you to try and lengthen the top bit of both legs. And that means rocking towards the sitting bones. So it's like you were trying to stick your tailbone off the mat behind you. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. If there's no movement there, try bringing the foot a bit further forwards. 
Okay, when you're ready for more, you can come up a bit higher on the hands and work your chest forwards and maybe work the leg in. And sometimes, especially if you find yourself gripping, gritting your teeth, it's helpful to sway. So you could gently, not bouncing, but just gently coaxing the leg one way, the other way. Lean back on your hands a little bit. Tip the legs all the way over to the top foot. So I've got my left foot on the top, I'm gonna to bring it all the way until the foot is on the floor. Bring your hands on the inside and take a little twist, look over your right shoulder. Yes, it is weird and awkward. Embrace it. <laughs> and then sitting a little bit more on both sitting bones, you might find that this top leg doesn't really wanna stay there. It doesn't matter, my foot's not on the floor. You can hug that leg into you and twist and look around over your left shoulder. It doesn't matter if the left foot is off the floor. The idea is that you hug the leg in really closely and it sends a stretch to the outer left hip. You really wanna breathe your way into your stretches. The more softness and relaxation you can find, the more the tissues will unlock for you. You already have all the length you need there. It's just telling your nervous system that it's okay and you're safe. Okay, unraveling. And without any fuss, you just bring your legs forwards again. You wanna take the whole thing on the other side. So bring your right ankle just above the left knee. Get, the, get it far enough over that it's more shin and not bony ankle knobble. Lean back on your hands, get this sense of openness at your chest. Remember what that feels like. That's what you're gonna go for when you drag the leg in. You could probably need to bend your elbows a bit to get the foot up. And then again, push into your hands, squeeze your shoulder blades, open your chest, stick out your tail. So you were trying to rock your pelvis so that you could get your tail back behind you. And you can stay or if and when it feels appropriate, wiggling the shape a bit smaller, walking in the hands and the feet, and maybe having a little sway. And swaying in and stretches is always good as well because your muscles don't just run in straight lines up and down your body. You know, the fibers wrap around and uh, go in all sorts of spirally, curly directions. So the more vectors you can apply, to both your strength and your mobility work, the more fibres you're going to be accessing. And then tip all the way over onto the top foot. So if like me, you've got the right foot there, you bring your right foot all the way to the floor, bring your right hand over, one fingertips, and work your chest through and look over your left shoulder. Yes, it's a bit weird and awkward, it's okay. start to come around, your right bum cheek comes onto the floor. You can hook your left arm around the right thigh. The right foot's most probably off the floor. Mine's really off the floor. Get your right fingertips there. Get the sense of lift up, rotate, and then hug that leg in. So yes, it's a nice twist, but it's a lot about squeezing in this leg, which gives a stretch to the outer hip. And who doesn't need that? It's probably a great one for all of us. And gently unraveling. Okay, bring your body to lie down.
and just tip your knees side to side, arms are wide, take up space, tip your knees side to side. Lifting both legs up towards the sky and you can really engage your legs, push the soles of your feet up to the sky, draw your toes back, lengthen the whole leg by engaging your quads, feels really quite strong, keep breathing, turn your legs out, so draw your toes to the sides. You've got the heels together, the backs of the calves together. Start to bend your knees like a frog. Bend your knees as wide as they'll go. And then open your feet, draw the knees and the feet to the sides. You've got happy baby, but you're not using your hands. It's just there on its own. And then reach through and see if you can catch the heels, some part of the foot. And as you lie back down, the weight of your torso will bring the legs with you. But hopefully you get the idea that in Happy Baby, the knees and the feet go wide. And again, that idea of getting a bit of fluidity and movement. So maybe you are rocking side to side. Maybe you can get a feeling of massaging the lower back and the sacrum up away from the ground further down into the ground, just feel like where is there space and possibility and where is there a little bit of restriction or hesitance or protection in the body. And then bringing the feet onto the floor and the arms wide and again tip your knees side to side. And on one of those diamond bridge ripples, just one, so you bring the big toe mound and the heels to touch, the outer blade of the foot on the floor, the knees wide, the arms wide, take a big breath in. Exhale, squeeze your bum, press your lower back into the ground, peel your spine all the way off. You pause at the top and breathe in. And exhale, rippling it down, taking your time. And then choosing a shape that you would like to end the practice in. So perhaps it is Shavasana. Maybe you lengthen the legs down wide and you bring the arms out to the sides. Perhaps there is another shape that will help your body to feel as free from distraction as possible. It will give you a sense of peace. And settle down for some rest. Give yourself space and time. And let this gift of movement settle in your body. A few minutes without me talking to be with your breath. And to find a sense of self-awareness with as little distraction as possible.
And I'm just going to read you a short quote from a book called Meditation Made Easy, which could just be a thought for the day. The challenge of wonder is to tolerate uncertainty. If you do not relax into uncertainty, wonder may start to seem like insecurity. If you do not relax into uncertainty, wonder may start to seem like insecurity. So where can you reframe something you've been feeling a little uncertain about that's been bringing up those feelings of insecurity? Is there something in your life that you've been trying to control? Nothing in nature is controllable. Build a dam, at some point the water will burst through. Build a building, at some point the wind will pull it down. Put a ship in the sea, the waves will take it. Settle into wonder. When you feel ready to move again, gradually start to bring your body back to a seated position to close the practice. Go easy with yourself. So I always end every practice with three thank yous. Thank you for my loved ones, my companions. Thank you for my body and my life. Thank you for all creatures and creation. So let's finish with a deep breath in.